Well, Rovers, in this episode, it's all about finishing off those longitudinals. My name's Alan Mulholland, and this is the story of how I built the Wave Rover 650. Three years ago, I refitted a 40-year-old Contessa 26 and took her on an amazing 7,800 nautical mile ocean voyage. We crossed the Atlantic twice, but a knockdown on the second crossing and COVID-19 put an end to my solo circumnavigation. So now I'm building a new boat, smaller, lighter, but more suited for a solo circumnavigation. The Wave Rover 650. Okay, nice, nice. Just a tiny bit of sanding required. So the reason I just put the peel ply on this area and not the rest of the fiberglassing I did last week was because this area will be above the counter and it'll be sort of a paint grade area so it'll make it easier to paint this. The area below you could use peel ply of course but it's just an extra uh, it's an extra bit of work. I mean it's the amount of detail you want to put into your boat. If you want to put more detail in give yourself more time and uh, well it all it all kind of works out that way. I'm happy with this amount of detail and I'll carry on at that level. So the longitudinals will be running right from where this one leaves off, which goes all the way back to the transom. It's eight feet long. And then I'll be picking it up right here, just at this height. And we'll be running it all the way to the watertight bulkhead, which is this last big one right here. So that's another eight feet. And then coincidentally, actually it's by design, uh, the bunk, the length of the bunk here is eight feet long so one sheet of ply will give me enough to do the bunk and one longitudinal and then over on the other side I have the very same thing which will be one sheet of ply will cover the bunk and the longitudinal and that's actually it sounds like a lot of ply but these are all really important structures because the longitudinals as i've already explained take care of the torsion of the boat and the bunk isn't just a bunk all the ring frames and bulkheads are built off of it so it's actually an important structural member as well anyway time to crack on with that Okay, so the first step in working out how to uh, attach the longitudinals is to get this bulkhead right here and straighten it because for some reason it had a terrific amount of curvature to it. But just putting these clamps on and 2 by 4 on the back, that's really solved it. it was, uh, and it wasn't just the one on the starboard side, it was the same with the one on the port side. I've had to do the same, same little action. That's fine, that's, that's what it's all about, being a boat builder. Now, the next thing I have to decide is, whoops, the next thing I have to decide is, how am I going to attach a stringer? So I'm going to want to carry on at this height, straight across all of these, and I think I'll just do it the very same as what I did before. I'll put a cleat coming out like this, I'll notch the top, and then connect a stringer right across. And I'll do the same at the top, right across here and that'll strengthen all three of these and I'll make sure that I center them as well at that point and really lock them into position. Okay, uh, time to take up those measurements and get started. So I've already established a level line here that lines up with the stringer from the bunk so now I just need to use a spirit level. And very easy, just adjust the bubble. There we go, looking perfect. Yeah. 
nice thing about this level is, I don't know if you can read this, but it only tells the truth. So I'm using the stringer to actually plumb the frames. Now pre-drill and do a cold fit before the actual glue up. As with any epoxy glue up, you want to start out by using a thin epoxy just to make sure that there's a good bond, especially on porous surfaces like end grain, before applying a thickened epoxy as really the adhesive. Well, Rovers, it took about a day to get the stringers, all these stringers, in place, uh, which seems like a long time, but they, they are glued and screwed and fitted well. Uh, everything's leveled off, so now it's time to start fitting the sides of the bunks, which are the last two longitudinals. And, um, you know, it's something I want to get right in the first shot because uh, the cost of ply is something that's always weighing on me. Now, I also have the supports for the skeg in the port and starboard quarters standing by because I know I'll have excess glue after I glue up these longitudinals and that's why I have those standing by. I'm not going to mix up a small amount of glue just to do them. You know, it'd be wasteful. Anyway, a lot to do. Time to crack on. Well, like everything about the 650, there's nothing difficult about this build, including scribing something like this to the deck, because the deck really, it only has curve in one uh, dimension, so it's not a compound curve. 
So this, if you recognize it, is the only leftover piece of white oak I have after I uh, put the beams in. And so it's exactly the right height. So all I need to do is just put my pencil on the edge of it. And there we have it. Just cut that line with the skill saw and you're in business. Now the other thing we do have to do is we have to mark the beams themselves. So just to do that, I'm just holding a straight edge up, following the, following the angle of this. Just get both sides done. And do the same for all three. And then... Just put this on top. Remind yourself that there's a curve from the fillet. And that's it. I know many of you are probably wondering why I'm using a skill saw to cut a curved line. And the reason is that the, the skill saw tears the fibers in the plywood a lot less than the jigsaw. I'll use the jigsaw when I have no other choice. Now in the case of all these lines, cut on the outside of the lines because we want to have extra room to squeeze epoxy in. Now we're going to be going across the grain, uh, or sorry, with the jigsaw, so um, it has a tendency to tear, so I'm just going to take an extra precaution here. Everything's braced, prepped, and we're ready to crack on with the longitudinals. Well, we're looking really good here. Let me just show you what the scribed line looks like. Don't know how well you can see that in this light. It doesn't have to be perfect. Don't forget, we want that little bit of space. We have approximately an eighth of an inch. Uh, a little bit more around the uh, oak beams and we'll use that space to squeeze epoxy in and the fillet will cover it and then of course glass. That way the bottom end grain of the ply is not stuck or won't come in contact with any water. It'll be fully sealed. Now at this point I've done a cold fit with the longitudinals. I have put them in place, made sure they fitted, and then I've pre-drilled them and screwed them. Now I've backed out those screws, I'm applying the glue which is Type Bond 3, and I'm putting them in place and they will be a permanent fixture now. Now the next thing we want to do is put a couple of butt blocks on here and that'll just bring the plywood and make it all uh, continuous. So it is a longitudinal and the more continuous it is, the more powerful it's going to be. All right, so just a little bit of glue on this. And this is just a regular piece of construction, one by four. I've just rounded the edges and uh, that'll be good enough for this. It's going to get sealed in epoxy and the front will get fiberglass over top of it. So all that's really left at this point 
is to just tack these in place and again I'm just using a little bit of thickened epoxy and we'll just trim that right there and just we don't need to put a lot in just a few little spots While I have the thickened epoxy, I might as well get these uh, skeg supports glued up or tacked up. I'd like to take a moment to honor the Wave Rover benefactors. So what is a benefactor? Well, these folks have made a contribution of $100 US or more to the project and their names will be affixed to a bulkhead inside Wave Rover and will be traveling with me on our circumnavigation. Now these donations truly are much appreciated. Well Rovers, I felt as though we got a fair bit accomplished. Um, it certainly looks like we produced a lot because these big panels when they go in they cover a lot of space. Now these are the last two longitudinal bulkheads and the next, and they're not finished, I still have to do the fillets and the fiberglassing, but the next step will be fitting the top of the bunks. And it's not, again, it's not just the top of the bunks. There's a lot of structural components that will be built off of the top of the bunks once they're in. Anyway, Rovers, as always, thanks for watching. Well, the Wave Rover patrons, with their pledges of support, really do make the creation of these videos possible. Now, if you'd like to know more about Wave Rover's patron page and Benefactors Bulkhead, I have links to both those pages in the video description. Now, another way to help Wave Rover, and it doesn't cost you a dime, is by sharing our content on your social media. So now, as always, Rovers, thanks for watching. Give us one more.